Zane here, and welcome to Mr. Armageddon Builds. Today we're taking a look at the ASUS ROG Zephyrus M16 laptop. This is an upgrade to my previous laptop, the most excellent HP Spectra X360 15T that I reviewed two years ago. Let's see how it stacks up and find out if this will be a worthy replacement. This 2022 version of the M16 is a refresh from the product released last year. The M16 has been updated with a more powerful and versatile Alder Lake Intel 12th Gen CPU and a more capable and efficient RTX 3070 Ti. Aside from the expected spec bumps, a few of the more notable upgrades are improved chassis strength and an updated camera with infrared for Windows Hello. I've been using this laptop for just over two weeks and I'm ready to provide my thoughts, impressions, and even hesitations for some users when considering this laptop. There are a few different variations of the device floating around, but the one that we're going to be looking at was purchased from Best Buy and is the model GU603ZW. Now, a quick note on the different versions and some of the confusion it has caused to customers. You'll notice on the Best Buy website, despite this being a powerhouse of a laptop, it only has a review score of 3.8 out of 5 stars. This is primarily due to one factor, a misstating of how much RAM is soldered into the motherboard. When customers asked in the question section of the Best Buy website how much RAM was actually soldered into the motherboard, the response came back from an ASUS rep, 16 gigabytes. The ASUS product website also showed the same information. So many users purchased this laptop thinking it would come with 16 gigabytes soldered in and they could easily add another 16 or 32 gigabyte DIMM. Turns out that was not the case. And there is only eight gigabytes soldered into the motherboard and a separate removable eight gigabyte DIMM. Now, that being said, this laptop is still upgradable to 40 gigabytes of RAM total, but a lot of users were pissed about being misled and tanked the reviews because of it. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and move on to the specs. This particular version I'm reviewing today is currently available at Best Buy, retailing for $21.49 as of May 2022. There are other configurations available from different retailers at different price points, but at a high level, this one comes with an Intel i9-12900H CPU, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, an NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti, a 16 inch 16 by 10 QHD display, and one terabyte of NVMe SSD storage. Now I'm not gonna go over each of these items in great detail, but here are some of the key selling points. This Alder Lake CPU has six high performance cores and eight high efficiency cores with a total thread count of 20 threads. It is a mobile workstation class processor, so on paper it should be a pretty powerful laptop or desktop replacement. In addition to coming with Intel's Ultra HD graphics, we have a dedicated NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti with eight gigabytes of VRAM, supporting up to 120 watts with dynamic boost with the hybrid MUX mode and adaptive sync. As mentioned before, we have 16 gigabytes of RAM total, eight gigabytes soldered on, and then an eight gigabyte removable DIMM of DDR5, and a four cell 90 watt battery that can charges both with the 240 watt power adapter and can also take a charge over a USB-C Thunderbolt up to 100 watts. Now this 16 by 10 screen is incredible. We'll go over it in more detail once we get to that section, but um, we'll also mention it is a matte display, so it has anti-glare qualities in addition to being very bright. Port selection is excellent, and we'll go over that in detail once we uh, look at the externals here. And the last thing I wanted to mention is it does have six speakers with Dolby Atmos, and the lid has this interesting prism rainbow effect. So as you look at it from different angles, it, it kind of gives off a different lighting hue. Uh, kind of cool. And we have this soft touch matte rubber finish on the interior. Uh, looks nice, feels good, but does leave fingerprints on occasion. Okay, so that's our high level spec rundown. If you'd like more technical information, I'm gonna go ahead and put a link in the video description to my project blog, where I have a lot more details about everything we just went over. But now let's go ahead and dive into the unboxing and see what we have. All right, so within the box itself, we have a pretty minimal loadout. We have the laptop, power brick, and some documentation. Now, one thing I will note, the box has a kind of neat way it opens here, where basically as you lift it up, it brings the laptop towards you. Kind of cool. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that for a 16-inch screen, this laptop has a very compact profile with tiny bezels all the way around the display, but still enough room for a webcam and a microphone. The screen-to-body ratio is excellent, but there are a few drawbacks. First, the LED indicators reflect on the screen. This is really only an issue in low-light situations, but it is noticeable. 
And because of the design, hot air from the exhaust vent blows directly onto the display. We'll go over the specifics of this a bit later. It doesn't cause any issues, but it does generate a lot of heat. The lid features this air go lift hinge that allows for more airflow for the fans as it pushes up the laptop. This can be opened with one hand and it can go back a full 180 degrees. The rubber feet on the bottom give nice stability and there are no sharp edges to bother your wrist while resting on the laptop. Coming in at 4.19 pounds it is not the lightest of laptops, but it's not horrible, especially considering the power this brings to the table. All that power and the excellent 16 by 10 display comes at a max thickness of 0.07 inches. Now let's take a look at the ports and IO, and it pretty much has everything you would need. The one exception would be replacing the micro SD card reader with a full sized one. Most of the ports are all located on the left side, making it a bit tight at times, but as the majority of people are right handed, I assume this was done to eliminate cords hitting your mouse on the right. Lots of display options here with HDMI, USB-C, and Thunderbolt ports. Charging at the full 240 watts happens via the 6mm barrel plug, and as mentioned earlier, you still can charge using USB-C power delivery up to 100 watts. The keyboard on this device is excellent. It has good travel and is very comfortable to type on while being fairly quiet. It's a minimalist design with dedicated media keys in the upper left, function keys along the top, and your home, in, page up, page down keys tied to the arrow keys in the bottom right. There is no dedicated print screen button, but you can use the function F6 to launch the snipping tool. The single zone RGB backlight can be configured in the Armory Crate application, and there's also hotkeys to quickly modify the brightness levels. A large glass trackpad comes with precision drivers. It's smooth, accurate, and a great size. It feels solid as one of the better to click pads I've used on a laptop. Now onto the display, and as mentioned, we have a great 16 inch matte screen with, with a QHD resolution of 2600 by 1600. The panel operates at 165 hertz when plugged in, but can drop down to 60 hertz when on battery to save power, which is why the screen will flicker if you unplug the power cable while the laptop is on. We have sRGB of 100%, Adobe RGB of 88%, P3 100% and NITS brightness of 510 max. One thing to note is that even at the lowest brightness level, this thing is still pretty bright, but other than that, I have no complaints about the display. It's one of the best I've seen on a laptop. And with that 16 by 10 ratio, you get a bit more vertical workspace, rounding out some of the amazing features on this excellent display. The audio system is comprised of six total speakers with two woofers on the bottom and four tweeters that fire through the grills and around the keyboard. Sound quality is excellent and it can get pretty loud. No rattling can be heard in the keys, even the highest volume levels. And overall, it's one of the better speaker configurations I've heard in the laptop. Now the webcam is a welcome addition as some Asus laptops don't have any webcams, which seems like a horrible idea. It's only a 720p camera, but the quality is adequate for web calls as long as the room has decent lighting. Here we are testing out the 720p webcam on this laptop, including the built-in microphone array. This is an audio test, one, two, three, four, five. The IR cameras are present for fast Windows Hello login. I didn't play around much with the microphone options, but as is, they sound pretty decent for a laptop. All right, so now let's go ahead and break this guy open and look at its guts. So taking the bottom panel off this laptop was surprisingly simple, and it's one of the easiest laptops to disassemble I've ever come across. The screws are standard Phillips head, and only three of them are covered by these easily removable rubber caps. I'm just going to put this on a uh, fast forward setting so you can kind of see the process of taking these screws out, but really pretty straightforward, but there are quite a few of them. All right, with the lid off, we have, uh, as you can see here, we have the cooling components. Here we have a Wi-Fi module. This is the 90 watt battery, components from the audio system, the two SSD slots, and the single removable RAM slot. So that's what we have uh, inside, easy to get to. So we'll go ahead and put it back together and then take a quick look at performance and gaming. So now we're gonna look at what makes this laptop really shine, the performance. Now a quick note on performance settings. So the M16 comes with a few preset power profiles. These all work as intended, but do not mess with the power settings in the Windows setting menu. Only modify them via the Armory Create. 
I did the latter, and it seriously screwed up performance, creating horrible lag, doing even simple things like opening the file browser. Gaming was basically impossible. So with that being said, um, I had to end up wiping the device and starting over. So stick with the Armory Crate and those settings, and you'll be just fine. So speaking of the Armory Crate, let's go ahead and launch it here and show the four power profiles that you have access to. So first, the Silent uh, runs quiet with the fans under 35 decibels, but with limited CPU and GPU power. CPU gets about 35 watts in this profile and will run at about 70 to 80% of its full capacity. The GPU, on the other hand, is, is very underclocked and ends up being about 50% of its maximum performance. So it's a great compromise for general everyday computing tasks if you want it nice and quiet. Next, we have performance. This is a balanced profile with close to stock CPU and GPU clocks. Fan noise does bump up to about 45 decibels and a combined CPU GPU power package of about 110 watts with the CPU hitting roughly 65 watts. So you're going to get about a 15 to 20% hit in performance using this mode. So then we have Turbo. This is a high performance profile with increased power and clock speeds. GPU gets a slight overclock with about a 50 megahertz bump on the core and a 100 megahertz bump in the memory. The combined power package of 140 watts, uh, CPU maxing out at 90. Performance is great, but at the cost of fan noise, which is roughly 55 decibels. So at a high level with these profiles, here's what to expect. Turbo is a performance beast, but only available when plugged in to the power brick. Note that although the laptop will charge over USB-C, you only get access to the Turbo profile if you're using the 240 watt power brick. This is great when you want to encode videos or get max FPS on games, but you will want headphones while using this mode. Performance is great if you want a bit of extra power with less noise, uh, even works good for gaming if you choose to go that route. But honestly, I think silent will probably be the daily driver for most people. It sips on the battery, it still provides decent performance, and also a lot less fan noise. I think for the majority of tasks like web browsing, media consumption, document creation, this will work just fine at minimal noise levels and heat output. All right, so with the performance profiles kind of covered, let's go ahead and go over some actual performance metrics. What I have is a combination of synthetic benchmarks that are going to cover CPU, GPU, uh, combined system performance. And we'll look at this in comparison to a few other laptops that are somewhat similar price and specification wise, in addition to comparing the three different power modes of this laptop. Now we're just going to throw these charts up and kind of move through them. I'm not going to read off the, uh, the numbers so you guys can see them on the screen and we'll get through these here quickly. All right, first up on the CPU side, we have Cinebench R23. As you can see here in the turbo mode, we have excellent uh, multi-core performance with the CPU. Up next, we have Geekbench 5. On the CPU test, we have both the single core and multi-core results, in addition to the GPU compute numbers. Here we have Unigine's superposition benchmark. I ran two different variations here. So the first one is 1080p medium setting, and the second is 1080p extreme. Now we have a battery of 3D Mark tests. So the first up here is Fire Strike. And here we have Time Spy. And rounding out 3D Mark, we have Port Royale. Okay, for actual gaming benchmarks, we chose Doom Eternal, uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus, and Cyberpunk 2077. Again, we have two different setting profiles. So first is 2560p on high settings. And the second chart here is running at 1080p at high settings. And that concludes the benchmark portion. And basically at a high level, this is an excellent performing device. Even the performance profile has some surprising numbers. So you don't have to necessarily always utilize the, the turbo profile if you don't want to deal with that extra fan noise. Um, you can still get great performance on the performance profile. So next up we have heat and noise. So this is definitely one of the downsides with this laptop. You get amazing performance, but the trade-off is a lot of heat and a lot of noise. So here we are comparing the internal temperatures of the CPU and GPU on the three different profiles. So this is the, the max temperatures. Obviously, if you're sitting in idle um, or you're doing some more basic tasks, you're not going to get near these temperatures. So starting off, you'll see that the CPU will level out on turbo peaking at about 3.2 gigahertz on the performance cores. And that will get you a peak of around 93 degrees Celsius. Now, 
know that the fans are basically maxed out, so you're not going to get any cooler if you're fully stressing the CPU on the turbo mode. And again, turbo mode is only available if you are actually plugged into the 240 watt power brick. And performance will see high in the CPU in the, in the 80s, and then silent keeps things in the low 70s. Note that if on battery power, the CPU drops only 90 watts on performance mode. All right, and on the GPU side, similar story. Turbo, you're gonna see high 80s in most of these tests. Performance mode drops the wattage to around 80 watts and keeps temperatures in the low 70s. Silent mode hovers in the high 60s. So basic summary, it's hot. It performs great, but yes, it gets hot. The nice thing is, is that the fans and the cooling system do provide enough performance to keep the thermal thresholds within reasonable limits. This cooling performance carries through to the external parts of the laptop. Although warm, at no point was anything uncomfortable to the touch. I ran a 10 minute loop on a stress test to generate these temperatures and near the trackpad we got 27 degrees. The keyboard itself registered at 48. The top of the laptop near the exhaust vents reached 55 degrees and under the laptop the hottest point was 50 degrees. So generally again nothing that's super uncomfortable to touch, it's not going to burn you, but the power brick, that thing gets toasty. I registered that when it was being stressed at about 64 degrees and it is hot to the touch. All right, so getting the temps out of the way, let's go ahead and move over to the fan noise. And to keep those temps from getting out of hand, this laptop has some pretty impressive cooling. ASUS refers to this as intelligent cooling and combines using thermal grizzly liquid metal thermal compound with six heat pipes and what they refer to as ArcFlow 84 blade fans. So let's look at some numbers and some sound samples from the fans at each power profile. This chart shows silent performance and turbo at both a general, somewhat of an idle state, and then stressed in a gaming or uh, stress testing performance scenario. And here are some fan noise sound samples at the various profile settings when in this general or idle mode. And here are the various profiles when all the components are being stressed. Needless to say, in order to keep this high performing hardware adequately cooled on the higher performance settings, you're going to have to live with some fan noise. So bust up the headphones. But silent mode is still very capable and keeps things nice and quiet for the majority of daily computing needs. Touching quickly on battery life, as mentioned before, we have a four cell 90 watt battery in this device. ASUS says you can get 10 hours of battery and that only holds true if on the silent profile. On performance mode, I was able to get around six hours using a website video loop with about 70% brightness and then when gaming, I got roughly an hour and a half. So don't expect to game much on battery power alone. All right, now time for some final thoughts. For its physical size, the M16 packs an amazing screen, incredible performance, along with a solid array of IO and connectivity. The 16x10 QHD display with 500 nits brightness is one of its major selling points. Performance-wise, this laptop can be a beast as long as you're okay with the loud fans when needed. The silent mode offers a good balance of noise and performance and will probably be the profile that most users enable 90% of the time while using this laptop. But if you need extra performance, turbo mode is there. I had hoped for a bit better battery life, but this isn't a thin and light ultrabook. Really wasn't expecting much more than what we see in this hardware configuration. Overall, you get an amazing hardware combo, good keyboard and speakers, and a bright 16 inch screen on the body of a 15 inch laptop that is less than one inch thick. It can be hot, it can be loud, but only when you need that extra performance bump. Overall, this laptop is best in class, whether you need a gaming laptop or something that just has lots of performance for media creation. All right, well, that's it for this one. If there's something I didn't cover that you guys would like to know, hit me up in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. Take care, guys.